this kind of work. I'm going to try to speak a little bit to that, uh, not in a prescriptive sense, but more in a, some, some empirical observations about the market uh, for uh, machine learning. Uh, picking up a little bit on, on some of David Deming's points this morning in his discussion uh, about what skills complement AI, like sort of within jobs, how the jobs are designed uh, for uh, these sorts of uh, workers. A starting point to kind of focus this a little bit is a picture you're all familiar with, I imagine, uh, at this point. Uh, it's these famous Venn diagrams, there's a lot of different versions floating around. They all kind of illustrate the same concept, which is that uh, we're looking for people who can do uh, work related to advanced data analysis. Uh, it can be uh, more productive to have uh, people that overlap in all three of these areas that have some uh, exposure to um, uh, hacking um, or computer science, uh, math and statistics, uh, and substantive uh, or domain expertise. And this last circle here uh, tends to always feature prominently. Now, one could take issue with this uh, perhaps in a, a deep learning world, but generally speaking, one of the uh, heuristics I've heard a lot uh, from hiring managers is if you can if you can frame the problem in a way that it can be kind of be put on Kaggle, you can hire an engineer, but otherwise get a domain expert who can hack, essentially, right, to kind of frame the pr problem, uh, given the intricacies around modeling and uh, feature extraction uh, and so on. And so um, diving into this uh, a little bit, um, this isn't, by the way, exclusive to data science. As you go online and scour kind of uh, what's happening on the, the, the demand side of the market, you see a lot of um, uh, these sorts of ads. I know it's hard to read from here. Um, what, a lot of ads that basically show the convergence of these kinds of skills. This is for a marine scientist. So a lot of ads saying we're looking for someone who has experience in uh, some of these principal component analysis techniques, random forest, uh, but also understands knowledge of you know, sea turtle populations. Right? So pretty specialized knowledge, all kind of bundled together uh, in one ad. Kind of raises the question, um, why? And so this is essentially an argument around specialization uh, versus the costs of coordinating these activ activities across uh, across workers. And so uh, the idea here is to kind of test the notion um, that as we move from this uh, world of data collection, where we've been for a while, to uh, analysis, uh, to prediction, um, is there this sort of trend towards um, how, how, what is the distribution of this kind of human capital uh, across jobs and across the market? Has that been changing? Um, lots of reasons to look into this. Obviously, for adoption, it has implications um, and for education. But also, um, if you're like me, you probably are involved in a lot of discussions at the school level about this question that also came up at lunch, by the way. The keynote speaker brought it up uh, about does everyone sort of need to know Python? Does everyone know, need to know machine learning? Certainly, um, we have a lot of MBAs asking for these sorts of things. Is, this, is it a sensible choice uh, to have these been bundled, bundled within one job as opposed to separated uh, across two? All right, so in terms of data set, um, it's also one David mentioned coincidentally uh, in, in his discussion. Um, IT, invest, IT investment has historically been hard to measure. Uh, I'm going to be looking at online job listings. These provide a pretty um, interesting way to track at a very granular level uh, technological change. It's one of the only data sets that I know of where you can look at is if, if, if someone's using R versus Python versus some other competing uh, uh, software stack. So it's kind of interesting that way. Um, and I'm going to analyze this data set, which basically has uh, a huge chunk of the um, uh, online listings that are available and has its monthly data basically over a six year uh, panel to kind of look at trends in this data around um, machine learning, um, what the jobs look like, and the kind of skills that complement them. And again, the em emphasis here is within job, the design of those jobs, um, what other skills they're looking for in these ads. So I know people in this room, is a, a fair number of people who have used these sorts of data, so I want to be a little bit cautious. Um, there's a couple of limitations to be aware of uh, when thinking about how to interpret the data, um, but there's some great things about it as well. So uh, the sampling uh, can be a little bit um, unpredictable sometimes, so it's a little, little challenging to interpret uh, the job listing as a vacancy, per se. Um, there's also the issue that with an ad, people basically list out a bunch of things they want in an applicant during the job search process. This is a heuristic process, right? Employers aren't following some taxonomy. They're going to prioritize some skills that they think are particularly important. Um, and job listings might also be viewed as being aspirational, although I'm not too worried about this because it's costly to overshoot the market uh, in some ways. What you get for this, though, is incredibly granular skills information to the extent that if, you, if someone's looking for somebody to work with TensorFlow, that's in the listing. If someone's looking for someone to work with a particular algorithm, that's usually in the listing. Another great thing about this, thanks, is that you have good, really good within job title variation in skills. This is one of the only data sets uh, that I know of where you can look at jobs across firms uh, maybe HVAC engineers, for instance, where one is using machine learning and the other is not, and look at how the skills across those two um, workers might uh, differ. Um, part of that is you have mapping of skills to job, uh, not skills to worker as you do uh, in some other data sets. Okay. 
Um, so the way I kind of interpret the uh, job listing is what skill would you want from a new hire in a particular job title? It's kind of a nice uh, detailed um, answer to that question. All right, so let me get to the data. So if, you look at, if I look into the job skills data, um, you can pick out some, these, this is a, a subset of the list that I've picked out, sort of identify those workers who um, are basically have some element of machine learning uh, in their jobs. I uh, get domain knowledge mappings from uh, the ONET work knowledge activities um, list. They, they basically have a list of uh, um, bodies of knowledge, include things like politics, recruiting, um, I don't know, biology, and so on. And so um, let me show what the data looks like. These graphs are coming out a little funny, but hopefully you can see. Uh, each of these bars is sort of the monthly, month-to-month uh, -month, uh, number of listings that have at least one of those skills embedded in the job listing. So it's increasing as you might expect. What starts to get int more interesting is when you look into the actual jobs, there's a pretty fat tail once you get past computer scientists and statisticians of these, uh, which you might call quantitative domain experts. You see economists here, you see social science researchers, and so on. When you aggregate that all up, um, what you essentially get is three different uh, areas. So the orange is information, what you might call classically information technology workers. That includes computer scientists. The purple is what you might call data scientists or business intelligence analysts. And the green here is everything else here. That's all these, um, uh, what's in the blue, the domain folks. So it ends up being a pretty big chunk of, um, of, of hiring in this area. Okay. Um, if you shade this by the amount of domain knowledge, each of these different categories requires a kind of access expected as well, where uh, the IT workers need a lot of skills related to, say, cloud computing, statistics, and so on. But as you get higher up here, you have workers here who basically um, need knowledge of some machine learning algorithm as well as uh, some of the domain uh, areas of domain knowledge that um, we, we were uh, just, just talking about. Okay, um, and this is somewhat unique, I think, to this class of technology. So it's a vast database. You can go into detail and depth about technologies. This kind of stacks up a whole bunch of technologies by the uh, fraction of domain skills uh, required in those jobs. Um, these little purple ones here are things like k-means, clustering, predictive models, uh, random forests, and so on. Um, and as you sort of go out the, uh, the right here, you have more what you might call traditional technologies, um, including the waves of uh, data analysis tools like Tableau uh, and SAS and so on, um, which are um, as you, as you go, to, go to the right. You also see this kind of shift in the distribution of jobs, occupations, right? Thanks. Okay. So um, this is, so I'm just going to walk through. If I, go to look, if I think about data collection technologies, this is SQL and uh, Hadoop. This is kind of the distribution of those listings over um, top-level occupations in the economy. They're all, they're all kind of clustered toward the left here, which is, uh, that's, those bars on the left are information technology. You see them elsewhere as well, um, but they're primarily focused in that occupational area. If I step into analysis, if I include Tableau uh, and SAS, for instance, in that list, it kind of moves a little bit to the right. It flattens out a little bit. Uh, if I go a little bit further on to random forest decision trees, it kind of flattens out uh, a little bit further, right? So you have this kind of spreading out of the distribution of where machine learning skills are living um, across sort of major occupation areas, um, at least in terms of, at least in this period of time. Okay, um, I'm not gonna have time to go over regression, so I don't wanna do that. Um, I'll just make two more uh, points. Um, this is for domain knowledge. You can look at this, slice and dice this data in a variety of ways. Uh, a couple of other things come out. Some of the soft skills uh, come out. One of the other things that, come, that comes out of these data, this was brought up by uh, Avi this morning and Hal as well, the how-to videos, but uh, the ability to learn, what you need to learn kind of as you go, uh, becomes a big trend in these sorts of listings. The last thing I want to mention is you also see um, evidence of this kind of shift in the uh, educational data, right? So as you look at what people are listing in terms of what kind of degree do I want, right? It's, there's a lot more for these sorts of jobs. There, this is, again, hard to read, but pretty common, which says, you know, give me someone who either knows finance and can hack or knows computer science, or is a computer scientist who knows something about finance. It's sort of, sort of duality where they're basically saying either or you come with a, come with a domain background um, and pick up the computer science skills or vice versa. And so that comes out of the data, um, data as well. So uh, key takeaways basically are that these hybrid workers may have an important role to play in the integration of machine learning, uh, which ends up kind of flattening the distribution of, these, of this human capital across uh, new job categories. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much.